our passion didn't start with a mouth. It started with people, with the well-being of the profession. And if you're like me, maybe a little bit of your nerdiness and all things tech too. We all want to love what we do, but the truth is burnout, people problems, and glass ceilings can keep us from doing what we set out to do. So let's get back to the heart of connection. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. This show is about passing you the knowledge, the habits, the systems, and the strategies to lead your teams, lean on your tech, and listen to your gut while you take care of people and truly the overall health of our communities. Let's stop using the wrong end of the toothbrush, y'all. My name is Dr. Kelly Tanner. Oh, and uniquely, I'm a dental hygienist too. You can consider me a guru in the dental and leadership industry. With over three decades of experience, My goal is to take you to the next level by empowering growth, perspective, and confidence. By identifying the gaps, recognizing the plaque, and extracting the truth with the other experts in the field. I'll share their stories, empower you to own yours, and elevate your passion in the process. So have a seat in the chair, put on your bib, and let's get to work. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. I am your host, Dr. Kelly Tanner, RDH. It's so glad that you're here with us today. I have with me here someone I've known for a while. Hi, Ashley. Hi. (laughs) I've known Ashley for how long? Oh my, well, I graduated in 2005. So, 03? 03. No, I was going to say 1903. No, that's (laughs) 2003. We met at Virginia Commonwealth University, where she was one of the first students I ever taught after I graduated from my master's degree. And Ashley was always super creative and curious and all the things that we talk about that make a great hygienist and a great entrepreneur. And so I reached out to Ashley because she's doing a lot of great things. And I wanted her to tell her story for everyone to, to know what it's like to be an entrepreneur, to still be a clinician, to be a mom, and all those things that can be, can be encouraging. So Ashley, welcome to the Dental Thank Handoff. you. Thank you for having me. I had, I had had people ask me to do podcasts in the past, and I just kind of like, I don't like being on it. But when you ask me, I'm like, okay, I love Kelly. I trust Kelly. So... <laughs> <laughs> this is my first ever one. So bear with me here. Yeah. And we were just talking about, it's funny because uh, we want to show up as our most authentic selves. And Ashley's mm-hmm. like, this is what I look like all the time. I'm like, bring it, rock it. I mean, if you guys are listening to the audio version, it's, this is real life. You know, it's mm-hmm. how you, it's just how you are. And I, I've always thought, Ashley, you're absolutely gorgeous. And Oh my gosh. You're too kind. You're too kind. Usually it's just the bun and a sweatshirt or scrubs. Yeah. That's well, you're wearing it. some of your own art too, which for the video, um, yes, you can show all of that off you. too. It's a, I just like to smile. Smiling is my favorite. You guys love that one. You so, know where that's from? That's from Elf, of course. I know. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. Yeah. Smelling's my favorite, but they're not wearing it. They're not wearing the latest Ashley Care. You know, come on. So Ashley, tell us why dental hygiene. I always love to start with this question. Well, I I remember in high school, I I wanted to do something either in art or in healthcare. And my parents, you know, military background, like, oh, what are you gonna do with art? You know, how are you gonna get a job? So I switched gears to healthcare and I just like, I want to do something with my hands, but then I don't want to do anything that may kill someone. And, and my mom, my mom's friend was a hygienist and she's like, well, why don't you think about dental hygiene? And so I looked into it. I was like, oh, it's great. You know, instruments, it's just like, you know, you know, drawing kind of. So I kind of didn't know too much when I got into it, but I had it in my head. I was like, I want to do dental hygiene. And I either wanted to go to, I live from Richmond. So I either wanted to go to VCU or ODU and I wound up at VCU and I love VCU. And I was so fortunate to have you as a professor and a lot of the professors there, especially as I'm left-handed. And I know that was a big struggle. We had a lot of left-handed people in our class. So um, it was, I know a struggle with you guys to teach us too, but I, I, that's how I ended up in hygiene and I've been doing it since then. I moved up to Northern Virginia years ago with my husband and I only had stopped working when I got pregnant with my son. It wasn't what was supposed to happen, but I stayed home with him and then got into the art thing and 
back working now. So that's my spiel. <laughs> so were you an artist before? Definitely. I had always been into art. I had always taken art. My aunt is actually an artist and that's kind of what was like, oh, I can, I can do that. But my dad is like, was like, no, it's like, find something. He's like, you can, that's like a side thing you can do. <laughs> yeah. The it's famous like, words of the well, parent. It was funny because I had actually wanted to do graphic design and now that's big thing. But back then the internet had just come out. So people didn't know. So I'm like, well, missed the boat there. But, um, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, I had always been doing ever since I was little and my mom still has drawings from when I was like a toddler, like three years oh. old and, and looking at it. Cause she said, she's like, I knew you were gifted in that area. Cause she's like, I look at your brother's art and your art and your art was just beyond and his was like stick figures at the same age. So it's kind of funny. So she's like, I knew you would eventually do something with it. I just didn't know when. Well, I'm kind of like grateful that you said that that you and I were around the, the same time when the internet was born, because mm -hmm. that makes me feel really good. But, you know. <laughs> I mean, I remember dial up, aim. <laughs> oh, I know, aim, yeah, the, oh the good gosh. stuff. Yes. So, but, and then two, I think the skills of an, of an artist, when you're talking about dental hygiene, mm -hmm. like you were, like you were saying, it's like holding, it's like being an artist as a, yes. as a hygienist and many, many folks who are more, who have more artistic inclination, mm -hmm. they, you typically see them in dentistry yes. as a dentist, right? Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've come across so many, I mean, who was it at VCU? Parkinson, Baxter mm -hmm. Parkinson. I mean, mm -hmm. you see his watercolors there and so many of us are artists because we, you know, so many of us were doing art first and then kind of translated to that because you know, when to apply pressure, when not to apply pressure. And I think that really helped my skills as a, as a clinician, especially when I got out to working and was working more. It's just, you, you just, you know, it's just, it's, it's very similar. It's very similar. So, so then you took that and you didn't go to art school. You went to dental hygiene school yes. because, you know, our parents like to keep us safe. Yes. And yes. They, they like <laughs> to make sure that we're going to make money when we get out of school. That's always a good thing. Yes. Yes. And then you worked for a while clinically. How long did you work clinically? And were you doing art in the background? And we're going to tell you <sighs> like who Ashley is in a real minute. We're getting to all this. We're building up to the story. Yes. Well, I, so when I got out, was working, you know, um, working in Richmond. And I was always doing art for myself, for friends, just, just fun. I was just, I, I do it for fun. And my, my best friend, um, from gosh, grade school, we always had art together. We did art together. Like art is our, that's my connection with her. So we were always doing stuff for each other or stuff for family, like family and friends. So I had never thought about, um, really making it into like a business, a business thing. Um, it was just something, it was a stress relief for me. And, um, I, so I was working clinically, then moved up to, to, um, Northern Virginia, I moved up to Northern Virginia about 2007. So not too long after I graduated and just trying to get situated up here. I got married in 2010. I was still painting. I was always painting, always doing things. And um, I started to, after I got pregnant with my son, um, I had friends who were like, well, can you do this for me? I'll pay you for it. And can you help me with this or draw this for me? And I started doing more research into stuff. And, you know, um, I have a friend was like, she's like, you need to just draw on the iPad. And I'm like, draw on the iPad? I'm like, I don't know. And at the time, my brother's girlfriend was, is a, she was a graphic designer. And so she kind of was like, you need to use this. You should use this. This is what I use. You just kind of have to teach yourself. So I, I got a drawing app, got an Apple pencil, just started teaching myself, going, going at it and just posting things. And then people were like, well, I want this on a shirt or I want this this way. And I'm like, how do I do that? I'm like, I have no <laughs> clue. I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I can paint it for you, but I don't know what the, so I did some research. There are companies out there that, um, print on demand companies where you can literally upload your images and they will print them on things. 
and um, that was going okay. But then you notice people would steal images if they're not. Some of the places watermarked them, some of them didn't. So they were creeping up in places on the internet, and people were noticing like, "Oh, this is yours. Like, I know your style. This is your stuff." You know. So hmm. I um, had I was in a crafty. It's called um, De- Crafty Dental Professionals. It's on Facebook. Cool. Pretty big group. So I had, um, that's when Julie, um, the the analysis I was telling you about with Dental Gift Shop, contacted me and was like, I'd love to put some of your stuff. I, I do shirts. I've been doing this for a long time. And I had I had heard of her website for, you know, for a while. And she we would just talk and whatnot. And then I decided out, she was like, you know, I trusted her and I knew she wasn't going to go and sell my images on Etsy or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much exclusively work with her. And then there's another girl who makes tumblers um, and things like that. And I, I, Amy, Amy Ammer, I work with her too, but I, I, I've had a lot of people contact me to sell my images and I, I just, I don't, you know, I, um, I'm very particular about who can have my art because I want to know where it came from. I want to know the quality of things that it's being put on Mm -hmm. because, you know, I don't know, someone could print it. And then I, I I don't know. I just like knowing where my art came from, what kind of products it's on and, and that. So it's been a very long journey. It's a lot of research, Um, but I'm here now and I'm, continuing to learn and try to try to grow. I mean, I don't expect to be huge. That's not my goal with this. My goal is just to, I want to create art because I love art and other people like my art and I like seeing other people happy. And um, I wanted to fit in with my schedule. I want it on my terms. Mm -hmm. And um, last year around this time, it was getting really crazy and really hectic with Christmas orders and stuff. So I knew this year I wanted to dial it back. I mean, this is not my sole source of income. It was not meant to be my sole source of income. If it becomes that one day, that's great. But that's not my <laughs> intention with the whole, with the whole thing. I'm not. I don't want a monopoly over dental stickers and products. No. And I I encourage other artists. I have a lot of other friends who are artists who I also purchase things from. I love seeing different art, and I love people being creative. And I think I want to put that kind of energy energy out there because I think that's good for a whole collective for dentistry and as a good as a collective for the world just to have that creative spark out there and encourage others others to do so. So I love Ashley too that we were talking earlier that everything that you see that's on their stickers or Mm -hmm. on a shirt like you're wearing you're you're creating it from literally scratch. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm, this is your, this is in your head. And so you guys, so Ashley Keir, it's, what is the name of your company? It's, it's just Ashley Keir Art. I don't have anything crazy. Yeah, Ashley Keir Art. And so she, you can follow her on Instagram. All that'll be in our show notes, but she creates it from, you know, her, her, the tip of her pen or Apple mm-hmm. pencil in this case, right. <laughs> on two designs and it's all original. And so mm-hmm. she was talking about earlier. So Ash, when you're when you were deciding, okay, is this, cause I want to get back a little bit, back up just a smidge in the story for mm-hmm. those people who are listening to us or watching us right now to take that leap, to say, I am good enough to go mm-hmm. create this. Like people actually like what I do and they'll pay for it. Like, how did that yeah. make you feel? I mean, it was, it was, I was kind of really surprised at it first. I'm like, Oh, people want to buy this stuff. I'm like, really? And, um, it made me feel good, but then I was kind of like, it was it was a bit overwhelming too, because I just had never. I mean, I had family and friends want things before, but not like you know the general public. Um, so it, it just it definitely made me feel good, but then I felt like okay, I have a lot of pressure now. <laughs> so yeah, because as an artist, because, you have that freedom. Yeah, I, I have a lot of pressure now, and and it's not so much the creating art and stuff; it's everything else you know, it's, it's the business part of it. It's the sending the orders out. It's the marketing, the social media and, and all that stuff. That's the real stressor. And I mean, dealing with people, you know, I mean, we deal with people every day in dentistry patients, but it's very different dealing with someone over the internet with an order versus someone who's in your chair and in person. And that that's where our disconnect can happen with things. But mostly, you know, I'm like, I I treat people the way I would want to be treated. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, 
you know, but that's the real, that's the stressor thing of it too. And I, I rely on, you know, like my husband and Julie, like they can give me a different angle of thinking of things too. Cause I just love like, well, this person said this, what should I do in this situation? What do you think? You know? And cause I, I don't like conflict. <laughs> I don't like people getting mad. I just, cause I kind of shrink back in my, in my shell. But I will stand up for what's right and I will not be a doormat. Like, and that's something in hygiene I've learned too. Because when you first start to practice, you're like, I just want the patient to be happy and this and this. But I'm like, I'm not a doormat. I will not be treated a certain way. I will stand up for what I think is right. And you can have your opinion, that's fine. But this is this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's come that comes with age too. It, it does. And knowing your worth, I think. Yes. And, and then through the process where you're learning it and you're learning also too, because as a business owner mm -hmm. and in life, you kind of, it's like, the, I don't know if this comes with age or just mm -hmm. experience or just making yourself go through to the other side of where you want to be, but it's mm -hmm. learn stuff that you do want to do and you don't want to do like, yes, right. And so, yes. and what I hear you saying is that you would love if you could just create and like all of this other stuff could just magically appear for people. You'd have yeah. this interface between your customers. And so how did you, how are you managing that? Is it, is it you doing all of that? Um, it, it is me doing a lot of that, like with at least what I sell on my Etsy shop, I sell my stickers and then I'll do art prints. And then I do like a lot of sun catchers and things. But yeah. as far as the t-shirts and everything, Julie is she takes care of that. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of those products and she sells those products on her site. So pretty much that's great with that. Cause she, I come up with the design and I'm like, here you go. You know, um, the only thing I deal with is the stickers and I don't think I will do anything more than that because I just, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't, well, want to, I don't have good. the space for the machines. I don't have the space for everything. And it just, it, I, I can draw, but I am not a good crafter. So I'm like, and that's Julie's department. So that's why we work very well together. So I'm very fortunate right. that she, she handles that. And I know some other companies, they outsource and have thing, people print out their things, but then they have a home base where they get everything sent to. I just, I, that's just overwhelming for me. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. So you just no choose, choose what you want to do. Choose what yeah. lights you up is the message and all of that. And yes. there is a way to outsource it and delegate. You know, if mm -hmm. you can't delegate or automate something that you don't like, you're going to burn out, I think, yeah. as a business owner, because yes. it's I mean, I've I've figured that out over the last however many years I've been doing this. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? I, I just need to automate that. Like my yeah. last year, my my February last year, mm -hmm. I spent that entire month just about like Q1, figuring out how to automate. So when someone sends a message, it sends it to my team, they know, mm -hmm. and we have systems and standard mm -hmm. operating procedures. So it takes all that out of it. So all I get to do is what I absolutely love. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and the hardest thing is, I think, is not taking on too much mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people who are like, can you do this for me? Can you draw that for me? Da, 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 da. And I have a hard problem saying no. And that's one thing I love about my husband. He has no problem saying no to anything. And so when I come <laughs> in, I'm like, should I do this? And he's like, no. It's like, why are you going to do that? He's like, you don't have time for that. And I just like, well, what do I say? He's like, just tell them, no, I don't have time for it. And I'm yeah. like, and it's, it's got, it's got easier. I've gotten more selective with what I do things. I used to do a lot more commissions now like I used to actually paint um a lot of home portraits and pet portraits and oh, stuff and cool. I I don't know if you've seen any of those because no. I, I don't really tell people I do that because I don't want them knowing I do that <laughs> but um I do sometimes do that for close family or close friends yeah. still but I've learned to say no to that because I did that last fall and I got overwhelmed and it's just, you know, you have to, like you said, delegate. If the easiest thing to, to say no is if you have those automated responses and you click and boop, it goes, you know, so you don't even have to th think about it. Yes. But. So make you yourself know. available for what you want to do. So my favorite line is not, not that I don't have time is I'm not available for that mm -hmm. because it keeps you in your power. Yes. And uh, I think that's a big thing too. I'm definitely a recovering people pleaser. And I, just don't <laughs> and I think, a, I think a lot of us are, yeah. and I think that definitely comes with age, age too. And some people are better about setting, like setting your boundaries. 
you know, you have to protect your energy too. And that's, that's the most important because you can't run on empty. So I think we've all tried and it doesn't, we just crash and burn. So, and you've done now, so you've gone from having a child, Mm -hmm. staying at home and Mm -hmm. doing art. And then Mm -hmm. now you're doing art and you're back in clinical a few days a week. And so what, tell our listeners what that's been like. And then I want to kind of get like a summary of all the cool things that Ashley has said for us today as entrepreneurs. It's, um, well, I, it, it was funny when I, I had not planned on initially going back to work, but the, the doctor I work for now, um, her hygienist was moving across country mm-hmm. and she had asked me to work for her in the past before, but I'm like, Oh no, I'm not ready to go back yet. My son was not in school yet. So we didn't want to deal with daycare or any of that. And, um, when, and now he's back in school, he's first grade. And her hygienist was moving and she's like, I will give you whatever schedule you want. If you will come. Wow. She's like, if you want to work one day a week, if you want to work, whatever. So we settled just three days a week. I'm half day and it is perfect. It's just enough so I can clean my clinical skills up. And I am very fortunate. I live in an area where there are a lot of dentists and there are a lot of jobs. And I know with COVID and everything, it's been so hard. I know so many good dentists who just, you know, the hygienists left and they left um, just because they had to get a job somewhere else. You know, they had to, I hate that word pivot, but they have to pivot. <laughs> and um, I was, I'm just, I'm very fortunate that just it, it worked out with her and she's, I am very fortunate to find a good, she's just a good person too. She says, awesome. good business. I have worked with a lot of, a lot of dentists and, you know, you know, a lot of people and it, it's just, it is about also what you'll put up with. I don't think there is a perfect or unicorn office. I don't think that that really exists. I think it's just kind of what you'll deal with and what you won't deal with. You know, there's given, give and takes with, with everything. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. It it is. And we are on the same page with, with things. And I think it's, it's, it's great because I had actually been going to her when I wasn't working. I was going to her, um, for cleanings. And I know, and I know it's funny because people are like, Oh my God, the doctor's doing the cleanings. I'm like, she does a good job. Yeah. Like, she does. <laughs> so now <laughs> you're doing, now you're doing fun. that and you're doing your business still too. Yeah. And I had to, um, I had already kind of parred back on things, certain things I was doing. I'm not doing them anymore. Like certain resin, re- the resin takes a long time. So there's certain things I do, certain things I don't, I do certain part back. My Sam was like, that's my husband. He's like, just do what's really sells. He's like, don't do the customization stuff anymore so i do the stickers i do what sells monday and friday are my i have to specify those are my days the orders goes out go mm-hmm. out because when i come home on the other days um i'll do a little bit of stuff but i don't feel like doing anything yeah, you know you, have you time you gotta, yeah you gotta or i'll just draw you. i'll draw I'll try to come up with new designs or whatnot and on the weekends i really try to relax and try to be more present with my family because it was just taking up like too much. But I think when you set those boundaries with yourself too, because when you have your own business, as you know, you are pretty much working all the time, but you really have to designate those times to be present. Yes, you do. Put the phone down, put this down and not, you know, just be present with, with what you, what you have to do and set those designated times. Cause otherwise you're just going to work yourself to death. Yep. And you don't want to do that. Then I you'll set, hate it. <laughs> I set deadlines for myself. I'm like, okay, I'm giving myself 30 minutes to finish this. And yes. that has been a game changer for me yes. personally, just setting yes. those times on that. And yes. to your point, when it's time to put the phone down, we put the phone down and we're present with our families yes. and ourselves yes. and for ourselves and to go to the gym or to go walk yes. or to meditate and yes. take care of you first, because that's the part that matters the most. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I think to making, making your to-do list and this is what I have to do. And then, you know, I, I think that's a big thing for me because I'd have it in my head, but then I'm like, I, I have to write it down. I have to yeah. see it. And that really helps too. For sure. So, yeah. And so how do people mm-hmm. get in touch with you and or order some of your work? Where do they go? Um, if they want to, I have an Etsy shop. It's Ashley Care Art, and I have the same handle for my Instagram, Ashley Care Art. I have a link tree because I, I have my um, 
finger in a lot of pies. <laughs> so I actually have some things on Amazon that Amazon does too. Oh, cool. So I have a link there, but Amazon prints it for me and they send it out. So they deal with, well, they deal with that, but it, that's very limited with things with that. But mainly my, my stickers and my sun catchers and my car, car charms. Let me show you here. Hold on. I'm at my desk where I have a bunch of stuff. Like this is like a little sun catcher I have, but so I also, cute. you can put it in your car and hang it around your, your rear view mirror. Yeah. So that's one of the things that, that I have too, but that's in my shop. And a lot of the, the shirts and the mugs and things like that, that's with the dental gift shop. And it's just the dentalgiftshop.com. That's what Julie, Julie makes for my, my designs too. So those are the best, best places to, to reach out. What a, what a journey you've been on and will continue to be on learning all of this because it's layers and layers of information. It's, it is a lot. And I encourage people just, you know, if you have other people encouraging you to do something, they, you, they'll see something in you. Sometimes you don't see in yourself too. Yeah. And I would have never imagined me doing this. I would have I, never, I just, I'm like, I just do this for fun, but they really, people have encouraged me, especially, you know, the hygiene community. Um, like I said, the group craft the dental professionals, um, RDH rant. I'm an admin in that group. I've been an admin in that group for a long time. All those people are wonderful there. Um, Andy RDH, Andy, love Andy. He's just, he is a amazing person. I can't yeah, tell he you. Is. He's just super he really supportive is. and just, but he's been there. He knows it and he's, he gives good advice too. And that Andy's group is, is a great group too. It's just all those people have been really, really supportive. And um, I would also stress people to do your research before you go out there and read the fine print with everything, because I'm just kind of that person. Oh, I'll just do it and see how it turns out. And my husband's like, nah, you got to read this, you know, <laughs> where the money's coming from. It's like, like, you know, when we temp, you don't be 10, you're not 1099. Don't be 1099. So it's kind of like that. You have to read yeah. the fine print, see how much people are making off your designs and whether that's worth it to you or not. And I suggest just kind of writing, writing down your, your goals of where, where you want to be. And if you surpass those goals, great. You know, if not, you just, you just keep working at it, but we are our own harshest critic and don't be too hard on yourself too. Cause it's going to be a forever learning process. You're never going to know everything. Yes. Great advice, Ashley. That is hundred percent true. And as soon as you know it, you learn something else. Yep. It's, it's never ending. It's constantly evolving and just, just don't stress yourself out. Like, Oh, that's not perfect. Or that's not this. It's like the only person who's going to really know you messed up is yourself. So true. You know. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't be too hard in it. And I, I have to say a lot of my, you know, clients and people have purchased things from me, especially the dental community, because we know how we each other are. We're, we're very pretty nice people, you know, we're yeah. pretty forgiving, you know, you yeah. work with people right. like if something doesn't happen, that's right. It's like, I want to fix it, make it right for them. Cause I'm like, okay, she's a hygiene sister. I want to fix it for her, you know? So not all people are not all people are bad. Most people are really good. Yeah, so. They are. And they want you to succeed. Yeah. That's what I've learned yeah. is that people yeah. genuinely want you to succeed and see you to do well. So it's, um, it, I just appreciate the fact that you have offered your talents to our community because it's the, the things that you produce, just the art is just beautiful oh, and so you. unique and it's got your flair to it. it. You know, you can tell it's from Ashley. It's got a little crazy in it. You know it. It's got to have a little crazy in it. Or it's dental. got a little crazy in it. And I think it's very important that we support each other too and other artists. And I, I support a lot of the other artists out there. I mean, if people follow me on Instagram, they know I'm constantly sharing stuff from Lovely32, from Nicole, or Beartooth Apparel, you know, um, all those people I have purchased from too. And I, I love their things. And I think we all, you all kind of get inspiration from each other. And I think that's, sure. that's great. I think that's great too. And when I think we really try to look out for each other too. Yeah. So I think that's a, that's a that nice, is, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. I that think, empowered. You know, I want to, I want to give back to the community that allows me to do what I can do. So. Yeah. So that, that empower, I mean, that just empowering each other is so important mm -hmm. because we can't do it alone. We can't, we can't, you can't yeah. live in a silo and, and think that mm -hmm. you're going to know all the answers. It's, it's through that information and those relationships that you truly yeah. Get happier and you get leaner and you just you're able to say, I don't want to do this. Do you want to do it? And you learn what other people like and you give yeah. it to them. And I think too, I mean, we all want to make money. We all want to support ourselves too. 
but it's not always about that. For me, it's really about connection. I want to connect. I like to connect with people. I want other people to be happy too. You know, I don't think you need to make Jeff Bezos money to be happy. You know, it's, I think then that, that that's what makes you happy. Fine. But don't, don't trample on people on the way up. That's mm -hmm. the thing you want to lift others up with you too. I think that's Absolutely. extremely important. So, totally agree. and I'm, like I said, I'm not going to be the only one out there doing art or doing stickers or whatever, you know, if someone makes a great sticker, awesome, cool. You know, I'm probably yeah. going to buy it from you. Yeah. There's room but, for all of us. There's that room for abundance, right? Absolutely. There's a ton of people in this world. So, yeah. you know, well, thank you so much for being on oh, with us yes. today. It's thank so nice to see you. Me. I'm so yes. proud of you. Oh, well, I have to say for everyone, you've been one of, you were one of my favorite professors and you've really helped us through school so much. Cause that first year I'm going to like tear up because that first year was really tough. It was really tough. And I remember back to it. Oh, I don't want to cry, but <laughs> you helped out you and, and some of the other professors were just phenomenal in helping us out. So I think it carved us to be the people we are today. That's for sure. So yeah, Ashley, that's, <laughs> that's the transformation. You know, Absolutely. That's, to me, that's Absolutely. what it's all about. So oh, um, I hate crying. I uh, put waterproof uh, mascara on today. I actually put makeup it's, on. <laughs> I, I cry too. We all cry. But <laughs> I love you and thank you for all that you're doing for our world. And yeah, um, thanks cool. for being on. And for our listeners, if you don't mind doing me mm -hmm. a favor and mm -hmm. going on to um, everybody, if you wouldn't mind going on to Apple Podcasts and give us the five star rating. The five star on Apple yes. is what matters. Five stars, five stars. Yes. We appreciate it. And keep doing great things, everyone. We appreciate you for doing the good work and be well. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ashley. Love you too. Great. Bye. <laughs>